Vi lämnar Norge och beger oss till England för att där besöka några av de vatten där det moderna torrflugefisket en gång startade. I södra England rinner den omtalade River Test igenom grevskapet Hampshire. Här har olika berömda torrflugefiskare lockat öringarna med sina flugor i drygt 150 år. Vi har här bestämt möte med konstnären och författaren Charles Jardine. So this is Charles, this is the famous river test yeah. where you've made it here. Where Halford and, and Marriott this, once fished. This is a river you wanted to come to, here yes. it is. So when did they once start to fish here, was it? I don't know, I mean, there's records going back to Henry VIII, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as I'm aware, mm. I mean, I didn't know Henry VIII personally. Well, no. I look old, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the dry fly men. Yeah, the dry fly men. Mm. I mean, that there's certainly records mm. at the Houghton Club that mm. would say that, and bless them, they were dapping. They were yeah. using live bait in the middle of sort of 1840, mm. 1850. Um, but after that, they sudden, someone suddenly thought, ah, I know, let's imitate this stuff. But of course. You know, th this is a tradition that's been going on in Derbyshire and all around there with, with uh, cotton and yeah. all these other people. So, yeah. I mean, they're obviously aware of fly fishing, it, but I, I guess Halford was the first one to really codify it in terms of our approach to it now, the upstream dry fly. Mm. Now, I know the people in the north are going to say, <laughs> it was us, we all want it. Oh, yeah. um, mm. And we Southerners always get a tough, mm -hmm. you know, a tough call from them. But nevertheless, the the ideas and and the the way it was set out was very much Halford, where you fish upstream, mm -hmm. you fish the dry fly to an observed feeding fish. Very sensible. Mm -hmm. And still, people do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're behind the fish. Yeah. You're in a blind spot. Mm -hmm. You you can control the drag and the, or the lack of drag. You can control your drift. It makes sense. Look, oh, 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 look at that! that. <laughs> Come on, it's your cast. Charles Jardine har fiskat i de engelska kalkströmmarna i hela sitt liv och känner väl till var någonstans i ån man kan förvänta sig att fisken vakar. Förutom att hitta en aktiv öring har Charles också lovat att visa oss hur han fiskar torrfluga i dessa vatten. Yeah, rude not to really, wouldn't it? That's a, that was a good fish, wasn't it? Yeah. So it, it sounded heavy, didn't it? So Charles, if you're going to try to fish in this fish, where should we go? In the biggest problem we have yeah. is we've got a fish rising there yeah. and a fish rising there. Okay. They're all on the far side. Now, there are certain areas you can wade, there are certain areas you can't wade here. And I would advise, this, this is quite a mm. solid bottom. We get in. We give it a try. Yeah, because, you know, the thing I've learned from the Spanish, the Italians, the, yeah. the French, that have become the modern dry fly masters, in my opinion. Yeah. Is the closer you can get to quarry long leaders, that is going to be far your best tactics and just trying to cast a long line and accurate, mm. you know. The further you are away from that fish, yeah. the more problems you're giving yourself. The closer. We give it a try. We're going to slip in here. Yeah. So we've got the angle right. Because the stalk is just as mm. important. Yeah. I'm just praying the dog doesn't join us. <laughs> stay. Stay. Sit. Sit. It's our turn now. Stay. Stay there. På vattenytan driver stora fok av vattenväxter förbi och försvårar fisket. Det här är resultatet av det mycket viktiga Grass Cutting Week. Under en bestämd vecka varje år rensas ån ren på vattenväxter för att förhindra att den växer igen. Fisket i test regleras av gamla anor. Exempelvis måste allt fiske utföras genom uppströmskast. Att fiska nedströms anses osportsligt och är därför förbjudet. Charles taktik går ut på att först låta fisken vaka sig trygg. Då den gjort det kastar han ut flugan drygt en meter uppströms fiskens vakplats. Härefter låter han den fritt driva med strömmen rakt mot fisken. För att hela tiden ha en direkt kontakt med flugan tar han in linan i samma takt som flugan rör sig mot honom. 
That's... Here we go. Brilliant. Oh. Nice hooking. There you go. There you go. That's nice. That's a nice trench it's class, a... isn't it? Yeah, it's a very upset trench, actually. I det klara vattnet är fisken skygg och lätt skrämd. Därför använder Charles en lång tunn tafs på upp emot 6 meter. I always play my fish off the reel. Yeah. I saw that you you was waiting just a short second before you set the hook. Stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, we always got a saying here called yeah. God save the queen. God save the queen yeah. before you make the strike. Which is easy if if you've got a if you've got a royal family. Yes. Well, you've got well, We have that as yeah. well. <laughs> I don't know what the Americans do. <laughs> God save the president. That's a lovely fish too. That's nice. Oh, oh look yeah. at that. Yeah, it's you know, a strong one. Yeah, but you know what? I think we've got another wilder here. You think we've got a wild fish? Yeah. I oh. Do. I do. I think we've got two and two, which is good. Oh, whoa, it whoa, really whoa, whoa. is. Look, 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 look at this. Look it's at fantastic. This. Yeah, that's a nice oh, fish. Oh. That's a spectacular fish. It's beautiful. Look at it in yes. the water. I mean, yes. You can lose fish doing this, just watching them. <laughs> Look at that. They're... Look at look how fat they are. I know. Yeah. Well, I, I take look, them. it's been. Yeah. If you'd been feeding at an a la carte restaurant for the last month, my you, lad, I'm you would get fat. fat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we take him here. All oh, right. Look at that trout. That's isn't, a, isn't that beautiful? That's a beautiful. It's almost so, like a sea trout. Yes. Yes. Very very. And there is the fly. Look at that. Yeah. But look it's so that. silver. Look at yeah. that sharp look at that. fin. That, that is a wild fish, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, but what beautiful a classic fish. fish. Should we put him back, Charles? I think we should. should. He's a gorgeous fish. Oh, no, fish. it's got to it's got oh, grow and yeah. be big. Oh. Look at that. What a what? Hey. <laughs> Job Good man. What? Very, very nice. High five on the test. <laughs> it shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Test skiljer sig en hel del mot de elvar vi just lämnat i Norge. Vattnet är kristallklart och man kan enkelt se ner till botten på de flesta platser. I takt med att eftermiddag övergår mot kväll intensifieras antalet sländor på vattenytan. Vi kan se flera fiskar som ställt upp sig och aktivt jagar det som följer med strömmen på vattenytan. Fisket i test styrs av gamla regler där ett sportsligt och gentlemannamässigt förfarande är viktigare än något annat. Därför blindfiskar vi inte på måfå utan sätter oss istället ner och inväntar en aktivt vakande fisk att kasta på. Längs kanten av uppstickande vattenväxter sätter en fisk igång att vaka på bekvämt kastavstånd. But everyone says, oh god, yeah, they're all big and all the rest of it. No, yeah, no, these this are, is a nice fish. These are, th this is the size they should be. Yeah. Caught him on this little fly I had from you. This is a spent spinner. Mm -hmm. What's your idea about a good dry fly? Um, observation, observation, in a word. Observation. Mm. If you look at all the great men, and I, <laughs> that's one of mine. That's that's just based on other people's patterns. Yeah. I'm not mm. a great man, <laughs> um, but if you look at the real. I suppose heroes of our sport, the the Lunds, the Ollie mm. Edwards of this mm. world, mm. all 
all the great patterns are based mm. on really good observation. Mm. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm. And then using the materials mm. at your disposal. Mm. Now, okay, we've got a bit of foam in there. Yes. We've got a bit of polyester mm. in the wing. We've got mm. all sorts of stuff that is man-made fiber. Yeah. Now, you're not gonna tell me that if, if Halford was around, mm. if Skews was around, mm. or Marriott was around, they're not gonna use this stuff. Mm. Of course they were gonna use this mm. stuff. I mean, they were fooling around with cork and elastic and mm. all sorts of stuff. Right. While I saw your flies, Charles, I saw that the flies you normally use on this type of waters are normally trimmed. Yeah, they're low the, riding, they're yes, flush. Yes. Well, you look at the surface, look, there's, there's some fish mm. moving there. Yeah, yeah. Now, look at the way in which mm. they're taking the flight. It's not hurried. No. It's just sipping, it's just yes. almost denting the surface. Mm. Now that means that the fish is confident about mm. taking that fly from the surface, isn't mm. going to get away. Mm. It's gripped by this very oily mm. surface. Yeah. They're expecting their flies in that surface film. Parachutes, clip tackles, mm. singe tackles, mm. anything to keep that fly keep low. low. Now if I was fishing poply bright mm. little freestone rivers, yeah. I might well go for a full hackle. Mm. So it's really looking at the water, yeah. looking at the insect, and then recreating that in the vice. What did I say? Observation. Oh, look at that. We've got look to catch that, that yes, one. Yes, there, that's a nice fish. Up there, with look the shoulders. Him. Look at him. That says, take me. <laughs> ju längre fram som kvällen skrider ökar antalet döda spent spinners på vattenytan. I bakvattnet Nedströms bron har nu flera fiskar ställt upp sig och börjat vaka. Av den lugna vakformen antar Charles att fisken äter spent spinners, alltså döda slendor. See that's why that fish is there. Yeah. Yeah, and it, because it's so difficult. I'm just wondering if I can get an angle on it um, to the side of the bridge. Det är ingen lätt uppgift att placera flugan rätt. Överhängande grenar begränsar kastmöjligheterna väsentligt. Flugan landar i en perfekt linje, strax uppströms en av de mest aktiva fiskarna. För att bibehålla direktkontakt med flugan så drar Charles hem linan i samma takt som flugan driver med strömmen. Fast flera fiskar nu vakar samtidigt så flyter ändå flugan vidare och förblir orörd. Kastet görs om, men denna gång landar flugan i en exakt driftlinje över en av fiskarna. Oh, this fish looks beautiful. Charles, would you try to land it there? Yeah. I will. Well, I want to get downstream of it for canning. Yeah. That's a beautiful fish. It is a lovely fish. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a lively rainbow. <laughs> Come on, Adam. What do you think? I think we ought to go home for some supper. Oh, Come, on, Come on. Now, this, this river has been just brilliant. It's I stunning. I've never it? dreamt about anything like that. After midday, we test has been much lärorik. Imorgon är det dags att följa med Charles till en helt annan kalkström längre söderut. 
they were very nice fish, all of them. Oh, absolutely. I Englands sydvästra hörn i Dorset rinner den lilla kalkströmmen Frome. Bredvid legendariska strömmar som Test och Itchen är Frome ganska anonym. Men för de som hittat hit räknas hon som en pärla. Medan Charles son Alex försöker lura en av de vakande öringarna i poolen nedströms så plockar Charles fram skissblock och penna. Vid sidan av flugfisket är Charles en uppskattad illustratör som ständigt syns med sina alster i såväl engelska som utländska tidskrifter och böcker. My dad introduced me to fly fishing on rivers almost identical to this back in Kent. Ever since those times I just love fly fishing. It's been the guiding light through my entire life. It, it's, it's my thread and my passion. It's an extraordinary thing to make one single element the main thrust of your life. Here is part of the philosophy of my life. It's being in a natural playground. It's fantastic. And all this has fueled that other love of mine, which is painting. So all in all, what more than I want than a little tiny river in the middle of unspoilt Dorset countryside and a few trout. That's where life is, round here. Look at all these caddies. Livet och insekterna i ån har alltid fascinerat Charles. Intresset för entomologi, vattenvård och praktisk flugfiske går hand i hand. Entomologin hjälper honom att identifiera vilka insekter det är som fisken äter och därigenom kunna göra ett lämpligt flugval. Oh, you bastard! Wasn't even looking. Won't take again. It did. There you go. I like to paint trout. Now it seems to me very sensible if you like painting trout is to try and catch the odd one. And you know, the fascinating thing about I should be concentrating on this because this is a very upset trout. You would think after 50 odd years of doing this, you get fed up with this. Not on your life you get fed up with this. If you do, I think I'll probably stop breathing. What's given me even more pleasure is the fact that my son has been fishing for this trout and he hasn't caught it. <laughs> I have. Bathed in the light, you've got these wonderful red spots, this lovely sienna back, and a dry flight that I designed years and years ago. Now, the strange thing is, we were talking about my philosophy, and my dad imbued in me a fact that you should only ever take from a river what it is prepared to give you, and you put, it, put things back to. And it's been my philosophy to put back to a river. Now I'm watching that fish. That's why I love to paint trout. For me, it's the perfect symmetry. Längre uppströms i åns lugnare partier vet Charles att det brukar stå fisk. Men han måste leta länge tills han till slut hittar en ytaktiv fisk som är värd att vänta ut. Det höga gräset närmast ån bildar ett bra skydd. Annars är det lätt att med en oförsiktig rörelse skrämma fisken i det klara vattnet. Då väl öringen har visat sig igen finns det ingen återvändo. Med van hand placeras torrflugan någon meter uppströms vaket. Very upset. Ooh. 
you know, I think, I think they're coming for the stonefly. So you're getting this odd little stonefly coming on the surface. And it just, when that fish moved out of station to take that fly, that's the amazing thing. It really came across the, I've got to, oh, look at I don't want to wade in this. <laughs> I just want to calm it. And turning it upside down tends to be a calming influence. There. Dagarna tillsammans med Charles har varit mycket givande och vi har lärt oss mycket om fisket i kalkströmmarna och om fiske med torrfluga. Vi lämnar södra England och beger oss istället norrut mot Englands nordvästra sida till grevskapet Derbyshire. De kuperade omgivningarna skiljer sig en hel del från landskapet i söder. Vi har bestämt möte med den tidigare riverkeepern Phil White vid Derbyshire Wye. Ån är bland annat berömd för sitt tidiga torrflugefiske och sitt naturliga bestånd av regnbåge. So, this is the famous Derbyshire Y. Yep. What makes it so famous? Uh, I think probably the wild breeding rainbow trout. Mm. Um, they're unique as far as I know, certainly in the, in the British Isles yeah. now. Um, they've been here approximately 100 years. Uh, 1911's the date mm. that most people come up with. Mm. Um, the, I have a suspicion it's slightly earlier, but I, I've no proof of that. Oh, right. uh, just from odd pieces that I've read in books. Mm. Mm. Um, they were introduced, um, they found the river to their liking. Uh, and they started to breed, mm. and they've been breeding ever since. Mm. Uh, and they are self-sustaining mm. and have been for a long time. Um, they are uh, spring spawners, mm. uh, so they're not affected by the autumn spawning stockfish that oh, right. over the years have been okay. put in. Uh, so that keeps them, mm. as far as we know, the, the, the gene pools mm. as clean as it can mm. be, shall we mm. say. So that uh, makes this river very unique. It's, it's yeah. very unique, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Another thing I think of when I hear about Derbyshire Wye, that's dry fly fishing. Yeah, yeah. This beat, this particular beat, has mm. been uh, dry fly, certainly as far as history sensibly can be traced back until the 1850s. Yeah. Ish. Really? Wow. Um, exactly yeah. when I'm not certain. Yeah. Again, I've got dates at home. Mm. I could actually but tell you the dates, but it, it, let's say 1850-ish. Um, about 150 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that, about that sort of time. Yeah. Um, there's quite a well-known fly tire that you'll know the name of, Ogden. Oh, right. Um, uh, who who was, is an early dry fly yeah. tire, yeah. and he brought. Was uh, mm. it said he mm. brought some of his new dry mayfly yeah. patterns up, uh, stayed at the peacock. Uh, fished um, on the river in Bakewell, yeah. um, met the Duke and his fishing steward and basically challenged them and said, I am going to prove that these dry flies, these artificial dry flies work uh, compared with the dapped mayfly naturals that they were fishing at the time. And he went out onto a weir somewhere and proved, caught a number of fish, proved that his dry flies worked. Uh, I think the, the, the story goes that the Duke was so pleased that uh, he said, as of now, we fish dry fly only, that's the way the river's going to be fished. And it's been dry fly ever since. That's a great and it story. still holds now. Yeah. yeah I think, think this, is, yes. this is real fishing. Yeah. 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 So, how long have you been fishing this river? Uh, well, I came up here in 1984 as the keeper. Yeah. Um, and I've been here ever since, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but I now work for myself. För att visa oss hur torrflugefisket går till i ån har Phil tidigare sett ut ett par vakande fiskar lite längre uppströms. Men för att komma tillräckligt nära in på dem och inte skrämma dem så gäller det att röra sig försiktigt. Oh. a couple of fish. Yeah. Feeding up there, don't they? Good fish. Yeah. You can see one over there. Oh, yeah. Clearly, just yes. catching the line. And again, he's coming. Oh, yeah. What do you think they feed on? Phil väljer att kasta på en av de fiskarna som precis har börjat att vaka. Trots flera vak har han ändå svårt att övertyga fisken att ta just hans fluga. Just turn back. No, he's nope. missed. Nope. It's looking, yeah. but it's not. After några resultatlösa drifter är det dags för flugbyte. 
Vaken är nätta och försiktiga och det verkar som att fisken ja. väljer något som ligger djupt ner i ytfilmen. Okej. Okay. Good man. Oh, grayling again. Grayling again. That's a nice fish though. Better fish. Yeah, very good. Better fish. Good job. <laughs> More like it. Often you'll find the grayling feed better yes. here in the morning. Yes. All right. Uh, oh. And the trout come on in the evening. Yeah. But a better fish. Uh, okay. All right. Good That's fish. Sweet fish. That's nice. That's a sweet fish, isn't it? Nice fish. Nice yeah. grayling. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Nice mm. fish. Sweet fish. Yeah. I put him back. Yeah. Bigger next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was nice. That was good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yes. <laughs> I can understand that. Uh, directly when we came down to the to the river, yep. you said to me that those fish they're feeding on spent spinners. How yep. could you see that? The rises were very, very gentle, Yeah, uh, which is often the key to mm. spinner rise. There's nothing more than a little tiny sip. Mm. Uh, and on this river, you get falls of spinner at yep. different times of the day, mm. not just in the evening. So mm. it's all, it's about hedging your bets. Yeah. You never, and it's always worth putting on a small sherry spinner mm. on here. Um, mm. During the day, it's one of the most popular flies mm. um, throughout the season, actually. Medan Phil testar att fiska av ett parti lite längre nedströms, stannar Johan kvar för att försöka lura upp ytterligare en harr eller regnbåge från poolen. För att inte störa vattnet i onödan så väntar Johan med att kasta tills någon av fiskarna börjar vaka mer frekvent. Under tiden byts tafsspetsen ut mot en tunnare ifall fisken är misstänksam. Efter en stunds väntan sätter en av regnbågarna igång att vaka. Den har ställt sig extremt nära vattenytan vilket i sig gör situationen en smula komplicerad. Ytan som fisken nu ser ovanför sig är mycket begränsad. Därför gäller det att placera flugan i en exakt driftlinje så att flugan till slut driver in rakt framför fisken. Efter några misslyckade försök går det till slut vägen. Trots att regnbågen inte är mycket större än 67 hektar oh, yes. bjuder den ändå på ett rejält motstånd. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Wow. Oh. Målet att fånga en av Derbyshire Wise vilda regnbågar har nu uppfyllts. Däremot finns det fler frågor kvar att ställa till Phil. Bland annat om hans syn på hur en bra torrfluga ska vara konstruerad. Så so, uh, Phil, du har varit tying flies för several of years. Du har varit fishing this river since the 70s. Yeah. What's your ideas, what's your opinion about a good fly for this type of water, particularly with dry flies as we talk about here? Size first. Okay. And generally speaking, this is a small fly river. Mm. And when I say small, I mean 16s and smaller. Yes. Um, down to, well, I can manage a 24. If you're good eyesight like you, you can probably get down a little bit smaller. Uh, right. There are times when it's important. Little black jobs, little green jobs, they work well. Mm. Um, I like my flies to sit low to the water, low profile on yes. the water. Um, my hackled flies I trim underneath, um, it with, usually with a V rather than a square cut, mm. uh, so that they sit with the hackles splayed. Um, that they sit low on the surface, mm. uh, which a dun does. Surface, not completely the... tight, but just mm. up a little. And mm. if you look at a dun, it's not standing right up no. Halfordian style. It's fairly low before mm. it takes off. It's so we not never strong. talk about any traditional front tackles here. Not anymore. No. Um, all my hackles these days are wound in, in mm. uh, half palmer over the thorax area mm. and then trimmed. I find that gives me a better footprint on the water. Last evening, yep. while we were here, yep. we had um, some spinners. Yep. And yep. later on at the dusk, yep. we had them on the water. Yeah. And I can see that you have a lot of spent spinner imitations here. Yep. I see that you also have a green little yeah. tag yeah. at the back. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, a cabbage white mark two, 
um, and it's a little pail spinner uh, devised down south when I worked down south and the guys who actually devised it tied a little green egg sac imitation at the back uh -huh. and they were absolutely convinced that when the females fly upstream which they do like a bit like an upside down question mark carry a green ball of eggs as they do it they go up to a mossy area like we've got up above us here lay their eggs and die and drop down mm. while they're doing that they're still extruding eggs um, and the theory is that there's green attached at the tail end of those oh, spinners right. it works and it you works. think the fish will see it yeah oh, right. i'm convinced of that i've caught fish in the dark that can tell the difference between black and red and take claret instead mm. so yeah i'm convinced i'm okay. convinced yeah yeah it's a bit like uh, an earlier tag of a traditional yeah, wet it's a, fly. It's, it's a wet fly style tag, yeah, but what yeah. it is is a little yeah, little uh, egg sac. Yeah. It works on certain sedge patterns as well. Mm. Dry sedges, mm. try it on that as well. Mm. Yeah, it's good. So, can I give this fly a try? Absolutely, you take it and give it a, give it a crack. Oh, see yeah. if it works for you a bit later on tonight, okay? I'm going to try another fly. Thank see you in a minute, <laughs> okay. En bit uppströms de lugna polerna ändrar ån karaktär och här finns ett snabbare strömparti. I den övre polen där strömmen rinner ut ser vi flera fiskar vaka. Jämfört med hur vaken varit tidigare under dagen är de betydligt kraftigare nu. Fast mängder av nattsländor syns svärma ovanför ytan så fortsätter Phil ändå att fiska med en spänt spinner. Hans erfarna ögon har nämligen upptäckt att det ligger fullt av döda sländor på ytan. Nice grading, this one a little bit better. Eftersom det har börjat vaka ordentligt så dröjer vi oss kvar vid ån för att se om det går att lura ytterligare någon av åns vilda regnbågar. Trots vakfesten ute i strömmen så ställs höga krav på en exakt imitation för att fisken ska visa intresse. Efter några försök är det dags att byta fluga. Imitationen av en spänd spinner byts istället ut mot en ljus nattslända. Till slut går det vägen. Fisken känns stark och spänner emot ordentligt mot botten innan den visar sig. Det är en imponerande syn när den till slut glider upp mot vattenytan. Kroppen är silverfärgad och vackert spolformad medan fenorna nästan ser onaturligt stora ut. Den vilda regnbågen är en perfekt avslutning på en fantastisk dag tillsammans med Phil White som har gett oss flera tänkvärda tips och idéer att ta med hem.